Hey guys, we're here at Active Life Athletics in Island Park, New York, and we're just answering some questions via Instagram. So first question, Christian Sanderado, the best exercises for strengthening the hips. Uh, the question to that will be, depends on what angle you want to strengthen your hips in. But overall, squats, deadlifts, lunges, and carries are gonna do a great job at strengthening your hips, as well as sled pushes and pulls. RW Leper wants to know, how do we incorporate our programs into CrossFit training? Uh, our higher level athletes, do they always start sessions with performance care? Is it blended into the sessions and how is it done over a season? Great question. And the answer as always is, it depends. So what we like to do is we look at their overall programming and we're going to weave our pieces in where it makes sense so as to not disrupt their training, but to aid in their training. So sometimes that is a very specific warm up for a training. Other times it is supersetting a unilateral upper body movement in between sets. It's, other times it's adding other work at the end. Other times it's adding work in the front. How we progress this over a season is also very dependent on how the athlete responds. We retest periodically. And so when somebody starts meeting our passing levels, then we move on. We move on to a different exercise or we move on to a different rep range, but it's, it's always being tested and retested and it's always evolving over the course of the season. Larry, Larry the Active Intern wants to know the best drills and practices for increasing mandibular endurance. Um, ask your mom. Steph913S asks, I have sciatic pain, what works or helps I'm working out, just not lower body, and doing three sessions of acupuncture. It's a slow process. I want to be fixed ASAP. Any tips? So sciatic pain is very complicated. Typically, sciatic symptoms, if you rest and don't do anything to aggravate it, will subside in seven to 10, 10 days. That is most sciatic symptoms. If you're doing something, through your daily life, whether it's standing too much, sitting too much, doing an exercise that is causing more irritation to the disc or the nerve itself, that seven to 10 days will turn into a much longer process. So I would have to know when it started. I have to know everything you're doing in order to answer this specifically, but typically getting some adhesion release to your sciatic nerve will help as well as heating and resting that lower back area. Again, this is most of the time. Not everybody does well with heat, but we find that heat helps more than ice as far as recovery is concerned. Jared Wayne Stevens wants to know, how did he get so good looking? It's all about the balance. I think you answered your own question right there. It's all about structural balance work. Ryan Candies is asking, I'm trying to improve my push jerks and stability at the top. Thoracic mobility are my biggest limiters, along with a little pain in the rear delt area. Any thoughts on how to improve these areas? So first thing to improve thoracic mobility, finding some thoracic mobility drills like quadruped thoracic extension is a great drill for improving that and hitting that on a daily basis. Also incorporating behind the neck presses will also drive a little bit more external rotation and thoracic extension. Another great exercise is accumulating time in a handstand. Just against the wall, you don't have to do it freestanding, but getting yourself up there against the wall and accumulating time in that position will start to build some strength and mobility through your shoulders, and we've seen it help a lot with people improving their jerks. 913S asks, I have sciatic pain, what works? Um, still working out, just not lower body, three sections of acupuncture, it's a slow process, I want to be fixed ASAP, any tips? Well. If this is true sciatica and it's in the inflammatory phase, the best thing you can do is deload your body, which is rest a little bit, get some heat on you, get some, some manual therapy in there just to start to move some of that inflammation out of, the, out of the way, and then slowly start to reintegrate movement over the course of the next week. So INRC1990 is saying he has groin pain from long drives, is it tight hip flexors or adductors or both? Typically it is not tight hip flexors. If you're feeling tightness in your groin or anterior hip, 
it is usually the posterior hip capsule or the adductors that are going to be shortened down and adhesed, which changes the axis of rotation of your hip joint and causes overpressuring in the front. It's a common misconception that tight hip flexors cause anterior hip pain in, in sitting. They don't. So we have a question from Bulletproof Legs. The question is, when performing pause squats, front or back, do you recommend going ass to grass or just below 90 for the pause? We recommend going as deep as possible. Go to the end of your hip range and stay there because you're going to start to develop strength in the range that you train. If you only go to just below 90, but you're used to catching squats or snatches deeper, you're not developing any sort of strength and stability in the position that you need it most. So get all the way down and stay nice and tight and strong at the bottom of your end range. Schmecki underscore says, my lower back is con constantly tight from tight hips and tight lats. Last time I couldn't bend forward for three days. So if you had got to the point where you couldn't bend forward for three days, that was an acute disc inflammation. And so you either really overloaded yourself big one time, or you were consistently overloading yourself and you got to that breaking point. Uh, either way, if you're doing that, you need some rest and to chill out for, for about seven to 10 days after that. If your back is just achy, you know, day in and day out, what I would recommend is getting to a trusted healthcare provider near you to get an evaluation to see exactly what your underlying dysfunction is, or you can sign up for our evaluation and we'll be able to evaluate you remotely and tell you your exact areas where you're missing ranges of motion and the exact movements that you're testing deficient in and where you are missing stamina across which movement. That's how we work. We're able to find what you are missing and we're able to provide it for you and over time alleviate your back pain. Oh, we have a live question. What do you think about wearing belts during performance care or any strength training? Belts can be helpful if you know how to use them and you're going heavy. It is not something, however, that we recommend people wearing on a daily basis, especially during Metcons. Uh, or especially during their lower percentage lifts. If you're relying on a belt during lower percentage lifts, you're really just masking some dysfunction and trying to hide some amount of dysfunction in your body. And you should really take care of the underlying dysfunction and not just strap a belt on. All right, guys, thanks for sending in your questions. Keep them coming. We will get to them again in the future. Uh, we always like interacting with you guys as there's lots of questions out there, uh, especially regarding pain and training. Just so you guys know, uh, if you all do become a member of any one of our Bulletproof programs, there is a question and answer forum where we're able to answer your questions on a more specific basis and we're able to analyze your videos and help you out on a daily basis. So for now, it's Dr. Jeremy from The Active Life. Keep the questions coming. Bleep, bleep, bleep. That's all, folks.